Hey guys, what's up? Uh, today we're going to learn a little bit more about uh, a little project that I work on. Um, and judging by the music, you'll know what project that is. Um, it's actually, I'm going to do a video on the G project today. Um, the G project <laughs> is just that. It's a, it's a project. I'm going to go a little bit into the history and a little bit into how it got its name, um, which it really, the G, it really doesn't mean green, which is kind of funny that a lot of people think that it does. It's kind of like my little inside joke. Um, so I'm going to stop the music for right now, um, just so that um, you can actually hear me and stuff like that, because I know that the uh, uh, last video is a little bit muffled. Um, the new camera I don't think has as good of a, uh, as good a sound as uh, the other one. Um, so let's uh, let's start from the beginning on you know where the G project came from, how it got its name, stuff like that, and then I'll actually show you some G project animals and the differences between um, the different uh, the different lines and styles that I'm going into with it. It's not that the different lines are unrelated; they actually are all related um and actually all come from the same exact uh, lineage it's just the direction in which i'm taking them to look like is diverging a little bit um so that's where the different lines come from um it's not that they're un uh, that they're unrelated because they're very much related with each other um actually they're all related with each other it's just how i get them to look it kind of diverges from each other all right so the first thing that I'm going to go over is where did the G project come from? Where, um, what was some of the lineage that I put into it at the beginning and stuff like that. All right. Um, first off, the the G project is literally like an ongoing project that it's uh, been in the works for probably about seven to eight years at this point. Um, what it is, and I mean. Some people are going to take this the wrong way, but it is actually, um, it, it started as byproducts of another project. Um, and that's, that's true for any emerine project, any, any, any true emerine project, um, from like Ron Tremper's line, um, or even, uh, Sykes's emerines, stuff like that. It, it's all from the same type of animals. Um, and it basically, all, any of that stuff, including the G project, is, is basically by, selectively bred byproducts of raptor and eclipse line animals, uh, originally. That's all it is. Um, every single I marine, uh, you know, every single G project, it all came, um, from that sort of line type stuff. So, don't, um... You know, don't think that it's like its own morph or anything like that. It's not its own morph. It's basically byproducts. It's, you know, generic type animals that are line bred to look the way they look. Um, that's the, the first thing that you got to know whenever you're talking about, uh, you know, green projects uh, or, you know, G projects or emerines or stuff like that. It's, it's literally... Um, it started as a way to sell the byproducts that looked better, basically. All right. Then it, it kind of grew from there to, wow, these ones look a lot better than what the, the animal um, that you were striving for actually looks. So let's, you know, selectively breed these so that we can make them better, if you will. Um, so the original... Um, like lineage of the G project basically started back um, with Alberto, um, my old my old business partner, um, the owner and operator of A and M Gecko, um, very great gecko breeder, um, did a lot of great things, including teach me everything that I know. Um, his the the original animals basically were jungle giants. Um, that uh, if anybody remembers back that far, his jungle giants were the most impressive thing that I've ever seen. Um, it, literally, for their time, they were the best looking animals in the world. Um, it was before we had all these morphs of like raptors and snows and enigmas and white and yellows and stuff like that. 
Um, they were jungled animals with extreme contrast and color, um, which those were like his signature thing, um, that and some of his tangerine lines and stuff like that, but that was his signature thing, that these, these jungle giants that were just, um, I mean, you could just look at them and you'd be like, oh, those are A&M's geckos. I mean, they, they were selectively bred and just awesome looking. Um, with, you know, carroting on the tail, and, I mean, they were just impressive animals. So, um, if you don't know what one looks like, I'll, I'll post them up on my, uh, up on, uh, on my Facebook page so you can see what the old jungle giants look like, stuff like that. Um, the other ingredient that was used was uh, HQ line red stripes. HQ line red stripes were the original red stripes, um, and they were phenomenal. I mean, they were perfect red stripes, uh, like pinstripes down the sides. They weren't like these bold stripes or anything like that. They were they were literally like thin red stripes that ran the whole way down the animal. Um, a lot of those animals had some nice carrot tail as well. Um, Alberto actually purchased a female that had about, I would say, 95% carrot tail. That female um, was kind of the building block and where a lot of like the carrot tail comes from in the G project. Uh, I mean, these animals were, this was probably back in like 2005, I would say, um, maybe 2004. And the reasoning for crossing the, uh, the HQ line red stripes and the jungle giants was to prove out how the raptor was created. So basically, he took um, the red stripes and like reverse stripes and uh, stripes of the jungle giants, bred those together, and that's where the, the term patternless stripe came from, was the some of the babies from that cross, um, which I'll actually show you what some of those babies would have looked like uh, back then, because it's still in the G project. Um, basically, it's a patternless stripe animal. It's not a Murphy's Patternless, that's two totally different things. The Patternless Stripe is basically a stripe on a reverse stripe, um, causing it to be solid color, the whole, you know, the whole animal is orange, basically, uh, the body. And then you can get varying amounts of carrot tail, stuff like that. Um, so from these Patternless Stripe animals, whenever you breed those back together, that's whenever the eye pigmentation can pop out. Um, that's how, you know, Ron made the raptors and the eclipses, and that's how, um, Alberto created, like, his, um, like, an unrelated line of raptor and eclipse, but it's still genetically exactly the same thing, because it was proven out, test bred back to, you know, raptors and eclipses, that it's the same eye pigmentation, it's the same exact thing. That's, that's how that stuff was made. So, from that, you get, you know, raptors, eclipses, and then you get, like, these byproduct animals. These byproduct animals, um, it was noticed that some of them were very, very jungly. Some of them were, like, very clean uh, reverse stripes down their back. Um, some of them were those patternless stripe ones. And a lot of them, because we used the HQ line uh, red stripes, had extreme amounts of carrot tail. So... From those byproducts, if you will, um, some of them had like, you know, the greenish tint to them and stuff like that. And whenever we're talking green, for anybody who's never seen like an emmerine in person or uh, like a G Project animal in person and stuff like that, it's not like uh, green like grass green. It's basically the, the greenish hue comes from uh, basically tangerine coloring over lavender. Um, that's what creates like the greenish look to them. I mean some are more extreme than others. A lot of times that color is not held um, to, to adulthood. It usually fades out. The, the best time to see that type of coloring is probably anywhere from like 15 to 30, 35 grams and then it starts to fade out a little bit. So that's like the perfect time to see what the animal is going to look like is in that, that little window. I mean, once the animal is bred, usually you don't see the green anymore and stuff like that. But anyway, back to um, the line developing and stuff like that. Um, whenever I got uh, started with Al Alberto, it was back in like 2006, some of these byproduct animals, I thought they looked a little bit cooler because they were, um, uh, had a little bit of that greenish hue to them, basically. 
So I basically took those and were, was breeding them back together. Um, the reason for doing this was, um, I don't know if it's in the new, the new book or not. Um, hopefully that it's in this book so I can show you a picture of what I saw and what I was striving for. Um, uh, it doesn't really have it in the new book, um, but this is like the Emmerine uh, style right here uh, from Ron Tremper. Um, in Ron Tremper's first book, he basically had a an animal that was it had like high white sides, it had that green coloration, and then the orange on it as well. Um, I actually got to see that picture before anybody else or before the Emmerines were um, uh, released or anything like that because Alberto had showed me a picture of it because um, he, he had, you know, got a picture of what they looked like and what, you know, Ron was working on before they were released, basically. Um, so I got to see that, and that's basically where my, you know, trying to get that green pigmentation into it um, uh, stemmed from, basically. So originally, I, I was working towards that greenish tint to the animal. Um, so that might be where like people get confused where G means green because of that. Um, then basically, what I was doing was selectively line breeding and stuff like that. Uh, whenever the Emmerines got released, I did end up getting um, a male and a female Emmerine from Ron directly to put some, put some different blood, if you will, into, into the line that I was already working on. Um, the bad part about getting those emmerines, though, the male, whenever I bred it to the female, the first baby that popped out was a raptor. So right there already, I knew that the male that I was using was already het for tremper and het for eclipse. So I had to basically uh, reverse engineer it so that I could wipe the raptor out. That's why you'll see whenever I sell um, my G Project stuff, I always say that it's 50% het tremper from the, the actual G Project itself, and, unless it's into the other lines that I'll get into, um, because the females, it, it's very, very hard to prove out females to be um, het or not het for tremper. Um, even if you breed a female to a tremper and she's het, I mean, it's only eight eggs, about eight eggs per season that you're going to get from that female that could prove her out. I, I've actually had odds as bad as, like, um, whenever you're supposed to get, you know, 50%, that, like, the first 20 eggs don't have it. So to prove out every single female would take about three years, in my opinion, to actually prove out the females if they were head or not. Um, I wouldn't go with any less than 20 to 30 babies from that female to prove out whether it's head or not. Um, so I, I just don't have the, the, the time. Uh, I'm, I'm cleaning it up, but it, 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 takes, it takes a long time to clean it up, basically. Um, I have proved out the males that I use to not be het for tremper. Um, so that right there is already a plus, but still that leaves the babies that 50% uh, possible because I treat all the females as if they're het, no matter what. Um, because with doing that, y you can cover your bases basically. A lot of them probably are not het, but I, I treat them as if they are het. Um, so that's why you'll see the 50%. The, the, um, the, in reality, the percentage is actually probably much lower than that, but it's still there. So I always just treat them as a 50% because no matter how many generations you go, you still got to treat it as a 50. You can't treat it as like a 12.5 or something like that because that's just ridiculous. You can't do that. Um, it's because, I mean, 12.5 isn't really a, um, a percentage of het, basically. Um, so that's why all the G projects um, from breeding G to G are 50%. No matter what, I always just say that they're 50%. The other part is um, my males are also het for eclipse that I use, so um, which is a good thing, and it can be a drawback as well. 
but uh, whenever you're dealing with patternless stripes and stuff like that, I always consider those possible hets anyway because of knowing what I know with, you know, stripe to reverse stripe, getting the, the combination back together. All right, so that brings us up to about uh, 2009, stuff like that. At this point, um, I, I would had worked on it for about three to four years already of my, you know, own stuff, mixing different stuff into it. Um, I felt comfortable enough to call it my own project at that point because I was getting animals that looked different than Ron's and Marines, but still kind of like the same classification. Um, but I didn't want to, you know, give them their, like, a set name it, It's because it's a project. It's always going to be evolving, and I wanted a name that would always uh, be fitting, if you will. Um, so the... The, the real reason why it's called the G Project is basically this right here. And I know you're going to be like, what? It, it's named after Gatorade? Um, but it literally is named after Gatorade. In 2009, Gatorade basically went from being called Gatorade to G. And they had commercials. They had commercials that um, basically were like, what is G, which I'm actually going to show you the, the original commercial that I saw that basically um, how the G project got its name, all right? And, I mean, a lot of people are going to be like, well, that's freaking dumb. Like, why did you, you know, name it after a freaking drink? Um, but that's literally where the name came from, and it has a, a couple reasonings for it. Um, and, the you know, one of the big ones is there, there's many different flavors of Gatorade, okay? So the project I knew was going to expand into many different flavors, if you will. So it literally means the G is from Gatorade, which is, like, really funny. And, like, it was kind of like an inside joke to myself for a long time because a lot of people were like, oh, the Green Project and stuff like that. And I was like, no, it's not the Green Project. It's actually the Gatorade Project, if you will. Um, but... <laughs> That's, that's where the name actually came from back in 2009. So what I'm going to do is actually show you the, the video that I saw. And it was, it was kind of funny because um, even in the video, they're like, you know, G.com. And I was kind of like, oh, what is this new thing like that's coming out? Like, this looks awesome. Um, and then it really is just for Gatorade. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually show you the video real quick. Hopefully it won't be uh, too, uh, too blurry or anything like that. Oops just kicked some tubs um, but uh, here's the actual video that I saw way back when um, and hopefully you guys can actually see it and stuff like that and hopefully the sounds up enough All right, that was basically the video um, from YouTube of the uh, uh, of the Gatorade commercial, um, which you guys are probably like, really? Is that why he named it? Um, but that is the legit reason why I named it the G Project. Um, so now you guys all know one of the secrets here is that the G Project is actually named after Gatorade. Um, which is, you know, really, really funny to me, but a lot of people are going to be like, well, wow, that's really freaking dumb. Um, but anyway, all right, back to the actual animals and stuff like that that I use right now. Um, this guy's actually shedding, but this guy is, um, the male that I call CT. CT is basically, um, whenever he was a baby, he was probably about 90% carrot tail. 
So all the animals that you see from me that uh, um, come out with a huge amount of carrot tail, they're all his babies crossed back to his babies. Um, he is a very, very, like, uh, I mean, he's, he's probably about, I would say he was born in like uh, 08 or 09. So he's getting up there in age, but he's still a great breeder. Um, as you can see, he's got his freaking skin all over the place. Um, so uh, just uh, bear with him for that because he doesn't look the best right now because he's shedding, and um, obviously. Um, and his color has faded over the years, but genetically this animal uh, is one of the animals that I'll never get rid of just because of what he is. Um, last year I proved him out not to be het for tremper because um, I bred him to a couple raptors and I mean he just uh, actually it was about three raptors and I got about uh, you know 30 babies out of them um, with different uh, tremper uh, animals. So I proved him out not to be het for tremper so he is actually the founding father of um, like the G rainwaters and the G bells that are coming out. Um, so definitely a cool animal and he's basically the father, grandfather, and, you know, great-grandfather at this point of a lot of the G Project animals. Um, some of you have probably seen, like, the really, really green animal that uh, I used a few years back. Um, I only used him for one year, and I didn't like the results from his babies, so I actually only used him that one year, and then I started to use him. Um, but this is CT. That's his name. It just stands for carrot tail. It's just easier to write on the tubs and stuff like that. Um, and like I said, he is, he's one of the main fathers, grandfathers, great-grandfathers of all the G Project animals. Um, but that's CT. Um, this next guy is Spot. Spot, um, is a G Project white and yellow animal. Um, this guy was actually born, um, over in Europe. Um, he's one of the first uh, white and yellows that I actually received. I received him back in 2000, uh, I believe, 9 is whenever I got this guy, um, whenever I first got the white and yellows. And uh, actually, so that makes CT a lot older. Uh, CT was probably born in 07 or 08, actually, um, because one of CT's babies was actually sent over to Europe um, to breed to a pure white and yellow, and this is one of the babies that I got back. Um, as you can see, still pretty good color for being a, an 09 animal, um, but the color has faded. Some paradox spots um, on him as well. Um, the reason why he's named Spot is because on his back leg, um, by his back leg there, he's got like a huge paradox spot. That's just why he's named Spot. It was just easier to identify him as that um, whenever he was in breeding groups and stuff like that. So this is Spot. He's been breeding um, since, uh, his first season was 2010, so he's, this is his third season of breeding. So his color still is a little bit faded. Um, I definitely have uh, some uh, younger pictures of him on uh, the Facebook page if you guys want to check out what he looked like before, um, before he has, he's done so much breeding. The next one is actually one of his babies from last year. Um, this guy um, is a white and yellow from the G Project, and as you can see, he's starting to get out, he has more carrot tail than his father. Um, basically, this is a white and yellow um, from Spot that was crossed to um, a G Project carrot tail from uh, CT. So this animal right here is definitely, um, you know, a, a good combination between the two of them. Um, and as you can see, like, as the generations go, they get a little bit better. The next one I'm going to show you, a lot of people might think it's actually from the G Project, and it kind of is, but it won't be called a G Project animal. And this is actually um, Spot Cross to a Super Hypo Tangerine, which this guy has some crazy looking color to him. You can see, like, the different uh, red tints that go down his body. Um, so this guy is like a very, very awesome looking animal, but still this is not considered, I don't consider this part of my G project just because it has a super hypo tangerine into it. Um, the G project animals are never going to be banded. They're always going to be at, at the very least jungles 
and they're always going to have like uh, you know crazy amounts of carrot tail and stuff like that. This guy still has the carrot tail, um, but he's I don't consider him part of the G project. I mean, he might look like he, he I mean he comes from it in a way, um, but he still is not part of the G project. He's actually an animal that I'll use uh, like with uh, super hypo tangerines and uh, sun glows and stuff like that. All right, so now we're gonna I'm gonna show you some of the babies from this year so far and uh, give you a little bit of a rundown on some of how I said there's like you know six different lines and stuff like that of uh, of G. Well, I'm gonna show you some of them and like I said before, the 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 lines of G are actually they're all related um, it's not unrelated lines of them they're just uh, they're just you know different uh, styles of what I was looking for um, this guy right here is actually um, just a very very colorful one um, it's one of the things that I work on with the G project is to make more orange coloration um, and uh, as you can see this guy has a little bit of carrot tail but it's not one of like the the G carrot tail animals um, it's definitely from that lineage, um, and his dad is actually CT. Um, so this guy or girl um, will throw crazy-looking carrot tail animals, um, but uh, he and he or she herself is not uh, a crazy carrot tailed animal. Um, the reason for um, the carroting on the tails of like the G project, it's not the same carroting that you would find on um, like a super hypo tangerine, for instance. If you would breed this to say like an Albi uh, Super Hypo Tangerine with like 90% carrot tail, um, if you would cross the red stripe carrot tail into that, you'd get animals that have like little or no carroting on the tail. Um, that is because the carroting on the tail is much different um, between the two, and they don't uh, they don't cross well with each other. So all the carroting on the tail of the G Project stuff is actually the red stripe style carroting on the tail. And again, that comes from the original HQ um, red stripe that uh, was bred, like you know, back in 2005, I believe it was. Um, that's where all the carroting in the tail comes from. It's just, um, it's just been line bred over the years um, so that it stays and it's uh, very, very nice as well. All right, the next style of G that I'm going to show you, I think these ones are the jungled ones. Um, this one as you can see has more of that like stripish look to it, a little bit of a broken stripe and then the one underneath is one of the uh, what, what I call the crazy G um, line stuff this one just has like a crazy amount of uh, it's, it's just a very busy pattern that's going on with it um, this isn't like a, a funky jungle line or anything like that this is just um, the crazy jungly animals that pop out of um, the G project. Um, some of them pop out like this, and like I said, it, it's from basically what females I use um, with the males that I use um, that pop out these weird, uh, these weird uh, patterns and stuff like that. Um, some females are awesome because you can get all the different uh, styles, if you will, of G out of them. Um, but they're definitely different styles, and that's what I'm kind of trying to to breed and to lock in is more of um, more of a, a line bred thing. So if it's a patternless stripe uh, G, it'll always you know give you patternless stripe Gs. Uh, if it's a super jungly G like these guys, then it's uh, going to give you super jungly Gs as well. But these are the super jungly looking ones. Um, hopefully you can you know see the coloration as well. A lot of them are very, very, like, orange. These ones don't have as much carroting on the tail. Um, but, again, that's because the females that I used didn't have that much carroting on the tail as well. All right. This one's uh, kind of a crazy-looking one as well. Um, this one is, uh, it has a little bit of the, uh, it, it's, it's basically like a bold stripe crossed into it, um, which you can kind of see the greenish tints on the side, like the lavenderish tints on the side. Um, this project's still going to take a little while. Um, to get the the sides bold again with like a crazy red stripe down the down the back um, Because whenever you first breed those together um, Both of the traits are lost. So you basically have to breed it uh, over a couple generations like breeding the uh, You almost kind of have to consider them like hets, but it doesn't work like hets um, You got to breed like the siblings back to each other and stuff like that to get the really really uh, 
a pristine, nice looking animal like you want. Um, but again, this one is just like one of the little like cross projects that I'm doing um, by getting them into like a boulder, boulder striped animal. But as you can see, this animal is only about uh, 15, 20 grams and it's already losing that boldness. Um, so I'll basically have to breed this one again back to uh, other siblings from the same project to hopefully get the, the bold patterning back into it. But as you can see, it definitely has like that greenish hue to it. Um, hopefully you guys can see that with uh, with this camcorder. All right, here's um, some of uh, the other G Project stuff. Um, well, oh, the whole video is going to be about G Project, so I don't know why I said that. But this is where like the reverse stripe style comes into it. Um, this guy's a very, very clean one. That reverse stripe will actually fade. This animal will turn to almost solid orange. Um, as you can see, it has much more orange on the tail. Um, it's probably about 75% now. Um, it might get a little bit more, um, but very, very clean head pattern. Um, and as you can see, the uh, the, bolt, the reverse stripe's already starting to fade in that one, and it's just a baby. Um, this one ha definitely has more of a reverse stripe that'll probably stay. Um, it will actually break up a little bit and just become more spotted. Uh, and it doesn't have as much carrot tail to it as well. Um, so, I mean, that's the other thing with the G Project. There's you can get all sorts of babies out of it uh, that look different um, depending on what females you breed to them. And um, it, uh, it definitely gives you a wide variety of, uh, of color and pattern as well. All right, here, here again is one of the car more carroty tailed animals. Carroty tailed? Wow, did I really just say it? Um, that uh, pops out of the G Project. Um, as you can see, it's probably got about, uh, you know, 75-80%, um, which that's still pretty good. That's still very, very hard to come by. Um, you'll get some that are close to uh, 90, um, 95. Um, but this one has about 75 to 80, I would say. Um, this one does have a little bit of spotting on the head, as you can see. Um, I want to try to clean that up as well. This is one of the, one of the cleaner looking ones, uh, as you can see by the, the back. Um, this guy was probably born a, a patternless stripe. Um, does have a little bit of like semi spotting showing through, um, but this is one of the cleaner ones, uh, definitely. All right, let's see what's underneath the paper towel here. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So I forget what all I put into this. Oh, these ones are the Eclipse style of the G Project. Um, they're, they're basically solar eclipses is what I call them, um, just because uh, they, they have a much better color. Um, these two actually right now are very, very dark for some reason. Um, they're, they're a little bit like mood rings. Um, sometimes like they'll be a little bit darker, sometimes they'll be a little bit lighter. Um, but as you can see on this eclipse right here, um, great carroting on the tail. Um, it's this one's probably about a good 80-85% plus the reverse stripe. And then uh, his friend underneath here with the uh, uh, with the non-reverse stripe, basically very very clean looking eclipse. Just very few spots on the head. Um, this guy's probably got about 90% uh, carrot tail, I would say. So for an eclipse, uh, that's definitely very very good. Um, these guys were basically from breeding uh, eclipses that I hatched out from uh, CT back to CT. Um, so these guys definitely have the carroting on the tail, and they also um, are eclipses. So it's uh, these guys are very very cool. Um, I don't know if I'll hold all these guys back again this year to breed back to them, or um, it, it, basically this this is one of the things that I have to be improving on um, with the G project is the coloration of the eclipses that hatch out of it, because um, as a lot of you know, like eclipses aren't usually as colorful as their non-eclipse siblings. Um, so to make colorful eclipses is actually very, very hard to do. Um, but these are some of the uh, more colorful eclipses. Um, hopefully you guys can see a little bit of the color. But like I said, these guys are a little bit dark today um, for some reason. Uh, maybe they're just uh, not morning geckos. Ha 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 ha. Which is another species of gecko. Hopefully you got my gecko joke. Um, 